Welcome to the Cook's Domain. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make corn tortillas. Uh, specifically, we're gonna be making tacos, so small tortillas. Uh, so for those of you who have come to this uh, uh, particular video to make it yourself, because, uh, you know, you can just buy them, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Just buy your tortillas ready. Um, you can get them at all supermarkets. Um, I'm just extra, and uh, for those of you who are extra like me, I'm gonna show you how to make it. It's not difficult, actually. It's a, it's a really easy thing. The only difficulty with it is the flour that you need to buy. It's not easily found here in the UK. And even when I did find this, uh, when I did find it, uh, there's nothing on the packet, at least that I could find, that actually identifies it for what it, you know, what I was looking for. Uh, because uh, most of it is in other languages that I don't speak. Uh, and it was only because I found a picture of a pack of this stuff that I found it in a store and I thought, ah, that's the stuff I need. And there's two types, um, a white corn version and a yellow corn version. I know in the UK, when we think of corn, we only think of the bright yellow type stuff, but um, it does exist corn that is white. Um, and the flavors are slightly different as well. So what is this? This is called masa harina or masha harina. I'm not sure actually exactly how it's pronounced. Um, and it's a flour made by corn, made from corn, um, but it's the process of how it's made that's different in Mexico. They, they wash it through lime, you know, obviously a lot of lime, um, in that part of the world and it uh, just creates a very different taste, very different texture, very different consistency. So it's not that you can't make tortillas with other flours, of course you can, I mean wheat flour to make white ordinary soft flour tortillas, but I'm trying to recreate corn tortillas and that's what you need, masa harina. If you uh, can't find it, um, or as you can see this isn't labeled anywhere as masa harina, um, that's what this particular brand looks like and it's a brand that I have found in the UK so you should be able to find it in some stores not in any supermarkets though um, it seems to be available only in continental stores okay so to make six tortillas and obviously you can scale this up as much as you like to make as many as you like but I'm, I'm only making six tortillas today I need 127 and a half grams of masha harina let's measure out 127 and a half grams And let's get that into our bowl. Okay, we also need 141 grams of warm water. So let's measure that out as well. Now, before I add the water, I wanna add just a couple of pinches of salt. And with a fork, I'm gonna start stirring this together to get it all to combine. Once it's all clumped up in this way, we can start using our hands to bring all of this dough together, to just squish it together. Now what I'd like to do is to put it in a Ziploc bag just for a few minutes so that it gives an opportunity for all the flour that's in here to hydrate with that water. We'll just leave it there for about 10 minutes or so. Okay, so after it's been in the bag for about 10 minutes, just coming together really, uh, we can take it out, but don't get rid of the bag. We're gonna need it. Very important accessory um, for making tortillas. But the first thing we wanna do is weigh our dough. Um, so we've got 270 grams there. Okay, so there we have six balls, approximately 45 grams each. And now what we want to do is turn these into our tacos. Okay, so we can take our, paper, our plastic bag, take our measured ball of dough, and uh, don't seal the bag, uh, and then just get something heavy. I'm using this uh, cast iron enameled frying pan, and then just press down. And what I do is to Make sure there's no plastic bag wrinkles. I'll turn it around, respread, and press. Now, I know some people are thinking, why don't you just roll it out? Because that's what we do in Europe with our doughs. I did try that. 
because I thought it'd be easier. And all I got was splits everywhere. So I'm guessing the Mexicans know what they're doing. They press, I press. Obviously they have a tool to do this a lot easier. Um, but this works just as well. Now my tortillas are ready. Okay, so I've taken two chicken breasts and I've sliced them into strips. And I'm gonna get them in a bowl to marinate a little bit with some spices. Okay, so the first spice we're going to be using is Saison. I have uh, uh, shown you guys how to make this in my beef chili recipe. I might do its own video, to be honest, of how to make Saison. And if I have, there'll be a link somewhere. Um, but if you watch the beef chili uh, video that I've done, the recipe of how to make this spice so it's ready to go is in that video. Um, so for two chicken breasts, I'm gonna be using three heaped teaspoons of the Saison. We're also gonna be adding a half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, a quarter teaspoon of hot chili pepper, and I also wanna add some chipotle pepper flakes um, but I don't want it as flakes, so I'm gonna grind this down into a powder. So in a pestle and mortar, I'm just gonna add like a little bit over a tablespoon of chipotle flakes. Grind those down. Add that as well. We also need a teaspoon of salt and a good five or six grains of uh, black pepper. Let's just mix that together. Now we want to add to that uh, about four or five tablespoons of olive oil. Mix that all together. Now we can add our chicken. Get it all in there. Mix that together. Now I'm just gonna leave it in there to marinate for a little while, but the longer you leave it, the better. Okay, so while our chicken is marinating, I've uh, sliced up some peppers and uh, some onion. Uh, you only need about one whole pepper for this, um, and you can just do one color if you like, just all red or green or yellow, but I've taken about a third off each and cut it into strips. And I've taken a half an onion. Again, you can use a white onion, but I've got red, so I'm using red here, and I've cut that into strips as well, uh, all ready for uh, cooking. So using any kind of pan you like, I'm using a griddle one here today, but it, it doesn't really matter if you don't have one. You wanna get this on a pretty high heat, I'm gonna have it on full heat, to be honest, because um, we wanna cook this chicken fast and we wanna scorch these vegetables fast. You don't need to add any oil or anything to it, just as it is, it's fine. So while I'm waiting for that to come up to heat, I take my marination of chicken and I'm gonna add to it all the peppers and the onion and mix those through as well. And there we go, I've now mixed it all in so the peppers and the onions are all coated a little bit with that marination. Okay, now remember, chicken, when it cooks, will set in a position. And because I want my chicken to be in strips, I'm gonna be carefully putting them down as strips. We don't want to crowd the pan either, so just get in as many as you can. We'll cook those off first and then we'll continue. Okay, once you've charred the chicken, now we can start doing our vegetables. Mm. 
and there we have it these vegetables are ready let's take them off the heat okay so there we have it our chicken is ready our peppers are ready you can mix these all together if you like and have them in a big bowl ready for those who want to uh, put it into their tacos or into their um, into their fajitas um, whatever it is you want to do get your salsa your pico de gallo ready your uh, guacamole sour cream cheese lettuce whatever you want to go with it and wrap up your fajitas or um, or your tacos I'm going to be showing you how to make the beef filling for tacos the ground beef filling and for this recipe I have a half a kilo or a pound of uh, minced or ground beef. I'm going to be using white onion that's been uh, diced, about a half a pepper, but I'm using different colors, so a little bit less of each to come up to about a half, but it's up to you. You can do red, green, yellow, whatever you like. Uh, again, diced quite small and one green chili that I've uh, diced quite finely. Now I'm not exactly sure what the authentic, authentic recipe for this is as I can't seem to find one. Uh, but most of the recipes I seem to find for this um, uh, seem to be just a lot of powders and I'm not sure how authentic that would be. Um, I've always made it this way personally but I like to check it for you guys just to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Um, so I'm going to stick to pretty much what I do because I think that's better. Um, uh, but if you, anyone knows better, by all means, let me know. We're all learning on this journey. But this is what I do, and I think this is a really, really delicious um, uh, beef uh, filling for a taco. Um, the only other thing I need to prepare now is the spice mix. So I'm going to add. So what is what I have here? This is a half teaspoon measure. I want to add a teaspoon and a half of the saison mix. So that's three of these. To the uh, one and a half uh, teaspoons of that, I'm going to be adding a half teaspoon of uh, garlic powder, a half teaspoon of smoked paprika. A half teaspoon of chili powder but you can add cayenne powder if you like a quarter teaspoon of onion powder a half teaspoon of salt a few grinds of black pepper And the last ingredient is a half teaspoon of chipotle flakes. Now I don't actually want them in flake form, so I'm going to get uh, my mortar here. I'm going to spoon out about a half teaspoon, a little more, uh, of the chipotle flakes that I have. And I'm going to grind those to as close to a powder as I can get it. There we go, let's add that as well. And just mix all of those together. Now if you find that authentic Mexican sort of spice smell is a bit off or not quite enough, just add another half teaspoon of saison or a teaspoon of saison. You know, it's your, it's your dish, do it your way. That smells really good to me, but you know, do what you think is right. Okay, so to a pan, add three or four tablespoons of oil and make sure that your heat is at the very highest setting. Tradition would tell you that we should uh, cook the onions first, and I know a lot of chefs do it that way, but um, I can't have the heat high enough to be able to brown my mince to get it that nice seared flavor that we, that we love on steak, for example. Um, so that makes no sense to me. I don't cook it that way. And like I said, I think a lot of chefs do things because they were taught to do it this way before there was much thought put into why we should do things. 
Uh, I could be wrong. But I, if I put the onion in now, I can never have the heat high enough to properly sear my beef. Or I'd have to remove the onion and then put the heat up uh, to sear the beef. And I didn't see the point in that. Um, so high heat. And as soon as this has got quite hot, we can add our beef and we want to start searing it and getting a nice crust and really browning it. It needs to be quite hot, so let's get our beef in. Another question would be, why do we add oil? Oil is a fantastic carrier of flavor. And we're gonna cook all of this in this one pan. So once we get our seasoning in there, uh, the seasoning will just blush and hydrate in the oil and the oil will just carry all the flavors, the smells, the spices. Now we're looking for brown crusty edges and it's starting to happen here and here a little bit and here a little bit. Uh, not yet, we don't wanna turn or flip it yet. Now we're getting some browning on there. Okay, now that we've got the browning, we can add our spices. We'll mix those in. And we can now turn our heat down to medium. Because we don't want to burn the spices. Now they're perfectly blushed, the spices. We can now add our vegetables. So in goes the chili, the peppers, and the onion. And that will help bring down the heat in the pan and stop things from burning. As you can see, we've got all this sook at the bottom, or as the Americans like to call it, fond. And we're gonna add water to this, which will help deglaze the pan and pick up all that stuff off the bottom as well. Let's just give it a few minutes with the, with the vegetables, just giving them the opportunity to uh, go a little bit golden, a little bit translucent, but stir it every few minutes so that whatever's on the bottom side doesn't burn. Okay, so have some boiling water ready. And just as you're ready to pour, turn your heat back up to full. And put in your water. Now you want to absolutely cover everything in water. Use the spoon to pick up anything off the bottom. You should feel it getting smooth underneath now, having everything been collected. Now again, the, um, the thinking behind uh, doing this is that all the current recipes seemingly say that you should reduce this now all the way till it's dry again, or at least till it's you know mostly reduced. I, I don't agree with that because the purpose of putting the water in here is to braise that meat. Because usually minced meat is very poor quality beef and we want to soften it and tenderize it. So just putting enough water in there and just reducing it the once um, seems like a pointless endeavor to me. I probably wouldn't bother with it at all. And I've just left the meat and the vegetables the way they were or cooked them a little longer so they soften. But I don't see the point in that. If we're gonna braise it, let's braise it. Let's do this properly and be left with an absolutely unctuous, tender beef. That will also help with these vegetables really softening and almost disappearing into the beef and just being left with this gooey beef that's gonna be absolutely delicious. So what I do now, now that we're at boiling, turn the heat down to about medium. So what I'm gonna do is then put a lid on to help keep as much steam as we can here so I don't have to keep topping this up with water. And also it'll create a little pressure in there, a little steam pressure will just help it cook even better. Now it's gonna take a while for this to cook down for us, at least 30 minutes, maybe even more to get it where we want it to be. Okay, so after about half an hour or so, 
you can see, almost all of the water has been has, has been evaporated. And the little thing that we've got here bubbling is probably the oil. Um, now, depending on the quality of beef that you've bought, depends on how much whether you know you need to add more water to this and continue braising it or not. If it's supermarket beef, you're probably going to have to top it up once or twice and just keep letting it braise longer. Uh, I'm using a steak mince here, so. Um, and I mean I actually bought steak and I ground, ground it myself. Not the stuff that a lot of our supermarkets claim to be steak mints. That's still not steak mints. Um, but uh, the other thing you can do is taste it. You know, if it's got, if it's tender and beefy and spicy, it's ready to go. And there we have it. Our chili beef for our taco fillings. Uh, absolutely delicious, full of flavor, tender and uh, amazing doesn't come much better than that and it's and it's and look just look at that absolutely incredible can't wait to get that in a taco I'm going to show you how to make fish tacos they're not particularly spicy it's a much fresher zestier citrusy flavor but absolutely delicious Today I'm going to be using a couple of pieces of tilapia fish. It's a wonderful fish if you've never cooked with it. Uh, you can bake it, you can fry it, you can grill it, you can do whatever you like with it. It keeps together, it's very firm, uh, but yet very light. It's not that heavy. Um, so what we're going to do to it today is we're going to create a little marination first before we uh, cook with it. So I want to add into a pot or a dish or whatever a little bit of lime zest. So we'll just grate that in. Remember, don't grate too far when you're zesting um, uh, any citrus fruit. We're just trying to get the very top layer off. You don't really want to go down into the white area. And to that, we want to add <coughs> some olive oil. And we also want to add the juice of one lime. Let's get that out as well. Let's pour that into our dish. Let's give it a bit of a mix. Let's get all of that combining. Okay, to that we want to add a half a teaspoon of our saison. Remember, oil is a wonderful carrier of flavors. So the saison will just infuse with the oil and the lime juice. There we go. And all we want to do now is get our tilapia pieces into the marinade. We'll just turn it around a few times just so we can coat it. And what we'll do is we'll just let that sit for a little while and then we'll turn it again um, just so that it has a chance to incorporate some of those flavors. Okay, so our fish has been marinating probably for about half an hour or so. Now, the longer you leave it, the better, uh, obviously, uh, but we're gonna cook it now. I have turned it a couple of times because our fluid doesn't cover, so I just wanted to make sure it all stays moist and covered in our uh, marination. And now we're gonna cook it. There's a couple of ways we can cook it. We can actually just leave it in this and bake it in the oven. Uh, or um, we can fry it and uh, that would be the quicker option and we'd also get a bit of a, a crust on it as well which would be nice. Now I know fish tacos usually are sold at least in street vendors uh, battered but when I do my tacos I always do a mixture of things um, so I've already got a couple of heavy things with the chicken and the beef so I like my fish to be as light and as fresh as possible so this is just an alternative um, but you can batter them if you like and fry them that's up to you. Okay, so I've got a pan on medium heat and I've poured the marinade into the pan and put our two pieces of fish. I'm just going to put a lid over the top to try and keep some of that steam in as we cook it. After a few minutes, we can now flip them over. Put the lid back on. Again, after a couple of minutes, give it another inspection. Flip it over. Lid back on. There we 
again, we'll give it another flip. Okay, so now we're ready to cook our tortillas. Okay, so because I'm not using a non-stick pan, I've just lightly greased a little bit of oil on the uh, bottom of the pan. And with the temperature on a high heat, we can add the tortilla for the first 10 seconds. And what I do is I'll flip it over for a minute. And when that minute's up, we'll flip it over for another minute. And you'll find that the tortilla could start to puff up. That's perfectly fine. If you want nice even brown spotting on it, just push those puffed up bits back down. There you guys had a minute on the other side. Now just check it for the for spotting. See if it's the way you want it. As long as we're happy with the charring, we're ready to put another one into the pan. Right, with everything done and our tortillas having been cooked, we are now ready to assemble. As you can see, we've got a bit of a, a taco feast here. First one we'll do is we'll add some of the fish. Start with a little bit of the guacamole. A little of the pico de gallo on top. Nothing like fresh salsa. And a little bit of our lime cream here, which is just um, sour cream, a little bit of mayo, loads of lime juice. And a little bit of hot sauce like a sriracha or something. And what we'll put over that is just a few crumblings of feta. Now ordinarily in Mexico they have something called contija which as I understand is quite similar to feta, a little less salty, a little milder in flavor. Okay, so let's put that to the side for the minute. Let's take our next uh, homemade tortilla. And what we'll do now is get some of this chicken. A few of our peppers and our onions. Again, we've got to have some of the Delicious guac on that. Put a little sour cream over the top of that as well. Some fresh salsa. There we go. Got some of this delicious beef that we've got here. Always got to go with the guac. I mean, you can just put some avocado pieces in this if you like but I just love the guacamole a little bit of the pico de gallo on there as well and the beef is always well complemented with some grated cheese okay so let's fold these up let's fold up our chicken stick that there for the minute Fold up our, our beef. And there we have it, a medley of our tacos. Uh, but let's give it a go. I've been looking forward to this fish one. Mm. That is so good. The combination of flavors is fantastic. I'm not surprised tacos are so popular all around the world. This is an exceptional, exceptional bite. Light, zesty, big, big fan. Okay, let's try the chicken. Mm. Again, that chicken one, it's got that char grill flavor on that. It's not too spicy, but again, the combination there is absolutely incredible. Now for the spicy one, the beefy one. Mm. 
Mm. And that's what I think of when I think Mexican food. Spicy, but with the cheese and the guac together. Again, another great combination. Um, get some hot sauce as well. Sprinkle everything with a little bit of a um, little bit of coriander over the top. You just can't go wrong. It's exceptional. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching.